now from the makers of Cold Water Irma. Pitch's body, thrown back by the explosion, toppled over, crashing all his precious clocks to the floor. There was silence. Hmm. Temple's fugitive. Steed. Steed, how did you find me? Find out about him. Ruth Boardman. Just like that? Yes, and a modicum of charm, of course. Fitch fixed all the bleepers, of course. Of course. Anyone ringing the right channel caused the bleep and also caused the capillary needle to jump out into the heart of the man who carried the bleeper. Neat. No fuss. Neat. No fuss. Yes, that gives me an idea. I'll uh, see you later. Hey! Hey, what about me? Where are you going, Steve? Come back and untie my hands. Let me loose. Hey! Oh, sorry, excuse me. I nearly forgot my umbrella. Bye for now. See you later. Steve! Steve, come back here. You can't leave me like this, Steve. But Steed had gone. Mrs. Peel sighed, looked down at her hands, and went in search of something sharp with which to cut herself free. The Avengers. John Steed and Emma Peel. The Avengers. Well over a million South African housewives are delighted with the sparkling clean wash they get from cold water Omo. Like Mrs. Connie Goldie of the Innocent. Well, I found myself without any hot water one Monday morning. Yes. So I dashed out and I bought a packet of cold water Omo. And I've never been without cold water Omo since. Yes, once an Omo user, always an Omo user. Omo cleans best. Over one million South African housewives have proved it. Lux is the beauty soap chosen by beautiful film stars around the world. They choose Lux for its rich, moisturizing lather. Lux, a beauty treatment as you bathe. Episode 6, the final episode in this story, in which John Steed and Emma Peel solve all the mysteries in the affairs of the big city financiers without having to dial a deadly number. In their own ways, John Steed and Mrs. Peel had both found out who it was who'd invented the unique method of killing by using the transistor bleepers. He was Fitch the mechanical genius of Warner's answering service. They'd all met up in Fitch's workshop, where Mrs. Peel was being held prisoner. Fitch had attacked Steed with another of his inventions, a nasty lethal pump gun. And in the ensuing struggle, the gun had gone off and Fitch was killed. Steed was glad he was out of the way, but what about the brains behind it all? Leaving Mrs. Peel to take care of herself, Steed took a taxi to think things out. Warner owns Warner's answering service. And there's Henry Boardman, the merchant banker, losing ground in business and already lost his wife. John Harvey, Boardman's partner. And, of course, Ben Jago, the unscrupulous financier. One of them, or all of them? <laughs> I'll have to find out. Well, first find your pigeons and then put a cat amongst them. For the next few hours, Steed worked quite hard, visiting people who didn't know they were visited. Next morning, Warner entered his office and changed into his working coat. There was a bulge in the top pocket. What the devil? Who the devil put this here? Warner, with a puzzled air, discarded the bleeper. In his penthouse, Henry Boardman was finishing breakfast. He removed his glasses and went to place them in the top pocket of his jacket. Now, what's this? 
It's an extraordinary thing. Boardman placed the bleeper he'd found in his pocket on the breakfast table with an air of genuine amazement. Later, in the Boardman parlour, John Harvey seated himself at his desk and pulled a rose out of the bowl in front of him. He was about to thread it into his buttonhole when he spotted the bleeper in his pocket. Ah! Somebody having a joke! Or is this a trick? He ripped the bleeper from his pocket and threw it on the desk in a fury. Much later, in the bar of the Bull and Bear, Ben Jago sat reading a newspaper and sipping a glass of wine. He spilled some and reached for a pocket handkerchief and found the bleeper. So, I'm the next one to be got rid of, am I? Well, we'll soon see about that. Jago got up and, without waiting to finish his wine, left the bar. As you say, Steve, cat among the pigeons, all right. <laughs> Henry Boardman was searching John Harvey's desk, pulling papers out of drawers indiscriminately. Harvey's voice on a dictaphone played back all the time. The case for long term is this will never be stronger. Inflation is as much a part of our life as a red crowd. Each year, the mercy crowd of the foul grows weaker. Alternative forms of investment do not counteract the erosion in value of invested capital. Uh, that's the end of take one. All right, Harvey, stay right where you are in that chair, nice and still. Jager, so you're in this too. And you're armed, I see. Well, uh, where's Harvey? I thought he... I don't know. I took the opportunity while he was out of searching this desk. There's nothing here, nothing on the dictaphone tapes to incriminate him either. But I know the truth. I can't believe it. Using this bank, Boardman's, as a cover for murder... Fraud. How did you find out? Ruth told me. She broke down after a visit from that man, John Steed. She told me it was all Harvey's doing. I didn't mention you. But of course, I should have realized that you were in it. All your lucky investments. I, I wanted to cut you in. Now you flatter me. Thinking I was that sort of a man? Now, uh, what happens now? Every man has his price. What's yours? Uh, I'm too old to turn crooked. I leave that to the younger, frustrated people. Like my wife. Then that means we shall have to part company, doesn't it? Henry! Ben! Ben, what are you doing? You can see exactly what he's doing, Ruth. He's about to add another murder to his list of crimes. No! No, Ben! That's all you're doing. If you'd kept your mouth shut... But Steve knows there's only one thing to do. Get out! Is he your worthy husband to betray us both? Oh, no. Ben... Put that gun down. Put it down. Out of my way. Stand away from him. Do you hear me? No, no, no! John Steed and Emma Peel, visiting the Boardman offices later, found ample evidence of Jago's visit. I think the term is foul play, Mrs. Peel. Blood. The point is, whose? Well, my guess is Boardman's. Hmm. Now, if you wanted to hide a body or bodies in this place... What spot would you choose? Something nasty in the wine cellar, Steed. Shouldn't be surprised, Mrs. Peel. Shouldn't be surprised at all. Only one way to find out, isn't there? And down in the wine cellar, Jago and Harvey confronted each other. I had to do it. I didn't intend to shoot her, just to silence him. She interfered. I thought when I found that bleeper in my pocket that you... You decided to get rid of you too, huh? It might not have been a bad idea at that. No, not guilty, but... Somebody planted it on me. Someone planted one on me as well. There's no prize for the answer. John Steed. Somebody mentioned my name. Steed. Welcome to the gathering, Steed. The proverbial bad penny. Well, it was a shadow of us, child. I just couldn't stay away. Steed, how did you know? About wines. Oh, I was weaned on Chablis. Wines become a habit ever since. It's a pity. One shouldn't overindulge in the good things of life. Such as company chairman, for instance. What are we going to do? Quiet, Jacob. Oh, you do know my colleague, don't you? Mr. Jago, the king of the option market. Oh, yes. Pity about Ruth Boardman, Jago. She was a fascinating woman in many ways. You're becoming an awful nuisance, Steve. Well, I do my best to oblige. Men of integrity need careful handling. Oh, every time. But in the final analysis, everyone is corruptible. You think so? Henry Boardman wasn't. But then perhaps Jago didn't offer him the correct incentives. Mm, maybe not. Everyone, I think, has their price. Oh, don't try it, Harvey. It won't work. I can handle it. I've handled everything else. Well, rather badly, if I may be allowed to say so. What? 
But why are we talking and not drinking? Can't I... Stay, 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 stay where you are. Steed turned as though surprised to find himself looking down the wrong end of a revolver. Jago's finger tightened over the trigger. Mrs. Peel, who was standing behind some wine casks, thought it about time to join the action. She rolled a barrel into the back of Jago's leg. <laughs> Cast caught Jago under the knees and knocked him over. The gun fell to the ground. Harvey dived for it, got to it before Steed. Steed dodged behind the wine racks. Don't let them reach the door, Jago. Right. There. They are in the wine racks. You go this way. I'll take the other side. Can't get out. Cut off their way to the door. Right. The two men moved cautiously forward. Mrs. Peel tripped over an empty bottle. What a waste. Steed seized a magnum of champagne by its neck. That's about the right weight. Jago crept forward. Steed waited. And then hit him. <coughs> Didn't even break. Good year. Mrs. Peel was tackling Harvey and was at a decided disadvantage. I can only have one bullet left. That's if I can still count. Here goes. No more danger. Mrs. Peel leapt forward. Harvey swung round and fired. Several times on empty chambers, Mrs. Peel closed in, gripped him. <coughs> Mrs. Peel got a good hold, threw Harvey over the cart. <coughs> Well thrown, Mrs. Field. Uh, care to share a glass of champagne? Well, it has been thirsty work. Now, let me choose wisely. No, no. Watch it, Steve. Uh, Jago's uh, coming too. Steed, who had been opening the champagne, turned the bottle on Jago. <laughs> Here, old chap, try this. Bit on the dry side, but a very adaptable wine. Finish him off, Mrs. Peel, then we'll finish this. <laughs> Later, in a taxi, going home. I make no apology for helping myself to a crate or two. Here. Tell me, what do you, what do you think of it? Hmm. A claret with unusual body. Hmm? Hmm. The Bordeaux district. You amaze me, you're right. Uh, a little village at saint Perion. Huh? This would be from the De Vere vineyard. Uh, Marion St. Clair. Uh, let's see. 1931. Fantastic. Emma, my dear, how do you do it? I read the label on the bottle. Gives a confidence that actually shows in your eyes. Put on Shield deodorant and it's dry in seconds. That's the way it stays right through the day. Shield never makes you feel sticky. It just protects you and keeps you dry, feminine, fresh. Wear Shield and the only thing you show is confidence. Shield gives a confidence that actually shows in your eyes. In your eyes. The cleaning power of cold water Omo gives you the superb cleanness you want from a washing powder. Listen to Mrs. Baxter of Claremont. It really is good, you know. I mean, it's, it's unbelievable, really, that, that it could be so good, you know. Once an Omo user, always an Omo user. The Avengers. <laughs> Listen every evening, Monday to Friday, to John Steed and Emma Peel, The Avengers, brought to you by the makers of Cold Water Omo.